What's going on guys, Unknown Player here, and today we're back with another Destiny 2 video for, of course, Black Armoury. We're going to basically round up and discuss everything in this one video. So we have the Forge, how to actually unlock it, how to complete it, and of course what happens after you beat it. So rewards, unlocks, and stuff like that. There's a bunch of secrets and puzzles that have been found pretty much on the same level as Warmind or Dreaming City. So an absolute ton I'm going to show you the locations of. And of course we're going to be talking about Black Armoury as a whole. So my thoughts, the community's thoughts, the feedback, and just what's going on with this DLC or expansion or whatever it is. So, of course, quite a lot going on. If you do enjoy the video, a like rating is much appreciated. And let's get into it. I wanted to begin basically taking a look at all the secrets and hidden stuff in this room in particular. There's actually quite a lot, a lot more than you might think there is. You actually need certain equipment to even view and see these secrets and puzzles. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is still being figured out and solved. So if you find something that you think is interesting or undiscovered, then feel free to tweet me or let me know. So we're going to begin with the more basic kind of entry level secrets and then jump into the more advanced stuff in a second. So, of course, that's the main forge down there but if you hop off this ledge just to the left here you can actually see some pretty interesting stuff which is again very mysterious and cryptic but this is actually where you pick up your first exotic quest line so right here on this cave inside here is a loot box if you open this of course going to give you the exotic quest line the item there's also a very strange mysterious box right here which we'll get onto in a second but there are lots of these and they all have very very weird meanings but once you simply open that crate you should go to inventory and you'll see inside pursuits this box which is the mystery box or mysterious box so this is going to require four locks to be open the fish lock butterfly hand and also black armory of course they're the symbols of the houses that ties into the backstory of black armory so of course the characters and houses that made these weapons and founded the black armory itself so completing this very first forge and of course doing the quest line is going to result to you in this bad boy the machine gun the legendary machine gun this actually isn't any ordinary old machine gun this thing's actually quite special in that you can see secrets when you look down the scope and this can only be done with certain black army weapons so of course you need these guns to even be able to see this stuff which is crazy if i just get this guy out of my way so let's take a full tour of exactly what this machine gun can see because like i said be prepared there's a lot we're going to get into a lot of weird stuff around this one room that is just hidden all over the place might as well start over here where we began this is the same place where the exotic crate drops from but if you look at certain boxes right here you can see hidden symbols again these can only be seen with certain weapons so if i look in with this scope can't see anything this scope again same thing it's only the certain black armory kind of forge weapons and also if you shoot it there's a very weird animation it doesn't happen when you're not scoped down it has to kind of illuminate the symbol and then you'll see the weird kind of explosion happen. So as I show you guys some of these secrets, you're going to start to kind of get a scale of just how much stuff they've packed in here, which is kind of intimidating because there's a lot of things to be found. Firstly are these things which are scattered around the room. These, of course, require quests, and there are a few of these for each house. If you just continue over the ledge here, we can see another box with a different symbol. This is an X, and again, does the weird animation when you shoot it. If we go and stand right about here, this is a very key point because you can see a lot of stuff. So we're going to begin just looking here, for example. You can see the letter E. Over here, you can see the letter S. If we look, there should be, I think on this pillar, there should be, yeah, R. So there's letter R, which of course these are English letters, but it gets a little more crazy than this. If we look back here, there should be the letter L and then H and T. Yeah, so H and T right there. And again, if you shoot these, it makes a weird animation. If we look over here towards the caves, you're gonna see even more symbols. So these are gonna be four hands, which don't for some reason make the animation. So these are a bit different. You also got more letters. So you got the letter Y up there and this flame symbol. These do illuminate when you shoot them. So again, you got more animation stuff and the letter should do the same. Yep. There's also another symbol on, it should be this one. Yeah, the cloud symbol, which is, I guess, raining. I think that's what that means. Even the box I'm stood on has a massive symbol as well, which should be around here. So you can see it's a massive version of the hand, which you can see around this wall yes yeah, so you can see four of them there if you look over towards the k's we have the letter b and the letter u as well so even more letters we're still not done yet there is even more so going further into the caves on this rock you can see it gets a bit more interesting so this is obviously a line of text which is definitely decrypted into something this is actually very similar to what they did in warmind so you may remember they had a screen with a bunch of text that was basically encoded on it it was gibberish they had to decode it by using certain keys so no doubt a bunch of the symbols and letters i guess where they're placed and orders and probably shooting them is going to be some way to unlock some kind of code or key we're still not done yet by the way there's actually quite a bit more so on this box you can see this is where the weird symbols come in so you can see this is some sort of sword, very similar to the adventure symbol. If you look closely, though, you can see there's actually lettering on this. So it says Nagma, which isn't actually a word that I know of. I searched it. There's obviously nothing that comes up. So this, unsurprisingly, is most likely some kind of secret, a puzzle, or cipher used to unlock something else. Also, just notice there's a plus symbol there as well. Over here, though, is one of the most interesting things. So just towards the kind of edge of the cliff, you can see behind here, there's actually a maze or a kind of labyrinth or puzzle, I guess. Once again, in Mount Sites, and you'll see even more complicated stuff. This is where stuff gets messy. We can see, I think, over here somewhere, there should be 
the same sword, which is, I think it's that one. This is the same symbol that said the words Nagmar on it. So again, I'm sure that means it correlates to something. You got symbols everywhere. So you got a kind of crocodile or lizard eating its tail. You got a hand, you got a sword again. There is, I believe this one is some kind of Norse symbol. So it does lead all the way through. It's basically a path and I would not be surprised if this could be some kind of order. So maybe shoot the hand first and then the lizard and then you shoot what will be next. He's down here. So the sword again. So this could be a kind of a pattern. There is another crest in this very far corner of the cave, which you may have seen by accident when you're doing the actual forge, but that is right here. So you can see there's another crest not found. Just checking there's nothing on these. There's one more symbol, one more box. But over here at the ledge, off the corner, you're gonna see a big Kabul screen, which obviously Kabul interface. And there is an interact button. If you stand in the right spot, you can see it interact. Obviously, do it. Nothing happens that we know of, but that might have activated something. Maybe there's a timer, something else on lock. And this right next to it is the crest I was talking about. So this is going to be another one you can find. Shout out to my friend Jada for actually showing me a bunch of these spots. But yeah, we're basically walking around just seeing how many actual symbols there are in this one little space. I could probably spend another hour in here just looking at symbols and pointing out weird stuff that doesn't make too much sense. But you guys probably get the picture. As far as the actual forge itself, I'm sure a lot of you guys can have questions about how do you do it, how do you unlock it, what do you get from it, is it worth it? Because it is a pretty confusing activity. Activity. Obviously, this does have matchmaking, but there are definitely quite a few warnings. So I'm sure as you may have noticed, it's 610, but it's kind of not really 610. It's a lot more than 610. Even if you're around this supposed recommended power level, whatever that's supposed to be, you're still gonna have quite a difficult time. Of course, if you're around there, you still need a very good team that's coordinated with good strats. If you're below 600, honestly, I would not try. I'm just kind of giving you advice. It's not really worth the time because you'll just get stomped. The enemies later on get pretty difficult. I'll talk about my thoughts on that in a second, but in terms of those you trying to just get the thing done, what kind of strategies and tips and advice is there? I'm here on my Titan because it's my third ult and I'm gonna do it in basically reverse order. So my Titan, then my Warlock and then my Hunter. So my Hunter can be my highest level. And then of course do the raid on Friday, which by the way, I will be live streaming right here on this YouTube channel. So of course, when the raid is live, check back here and we'll be going through and hopefully beating it as soon as possible. To keep the strategy simple though, I would say definitely hang around this area and Tether is going to be your best friend. Pretty much as always, Tether is always amazing. But the enemies are going to flood in and basically pop Tethers around this spot. So some good spots I've found is gonna be around here, on this rock right here, you can kind of get a bunch of dudes from this spot. Even on this rock, a lot of them swarm. So you can basically tether spots around this cave. I'd say all three of you go in this cave, so enemies go towards you, you can basically funnel them. The main part you need a strat for is going to be the final boss. So of course, he's quite a bullet sponge, especially at these levels, he's gonna be quite difficult for anyone. Basically, when the final boss spawns, you move over to this spot, which is obviously the best for sniping, and just kind of getting a bit of distance between you and the absolute mess of enemies is gonna be in the middle. You can stand around here, you can kind of hide behind the rock, you can head glitch, do whatever you want, basically take a bit of cover and just snipe the boss away. It's gonna be a pretty good strat. Obviously, it's not quite as simple as that. You need to manage the ads. You need to make sure you're doing constant damage to the boss to make sure his shields don't regenerate. What works for my team is simply Black Spindle and Tether, and also a little bit of weird stuff with this Sentinel Super as well. With this and, of course, enough orbs from my teammates, I can put a massive shield and block all their fire and then increase the damage of my teammates via the Whispers so they can do more damage and, of course, be safe. But if you know what you're doing and if you're high enough level, you definitely can go an EP shotgun. Again, just remember, it is nerfed. So you have to punch every three shots. One thing I did want to ask you guys about is have you noticed any difference in exotic drop rates so duplicates or new stuff just have you noticed an increase at all i myself in just my first day got quite a lot of exotics i saw a lot of other people saying the same thing so maybe they've buffed something but let me know what your experience has been i feel like it can't be just me getting that lucky and it's not just doing the milestones because i've got a bunch of in world exotic drops so like from enemies in the world but i got five exotics in total within probably about six hours to so doing the raids the milestones basically everything i got five exotics total first thing i finally got is the two-tailed fox so this exotic rocket launch launcher which I've heard mixed things about some people say it's amazing some people say it's okay the other thing though which I'm seriously seriously happy about is this thing the wave splitter some of you probably know fully what this thing is about some of you may have no idea but this I would say is one of the most powerful weapons in all of crucible it is literally the same thing as basically Rethus lens at launch it is very very powerful but yeah five exotics in one playstation has never ever happened to me ever since forsaken so i feel like something's changed it can't just be me getting lucky so do let me know if you've played a good bit if you've done milestones if you noticed any difference if you've gotten more or less exotics i'd be interested to see once you beat the first forge you're going to get access to basically a new kind of upgraded version of ada's inventory so you can do more stuff i've already grabbed these but from these you can get a modulus report which you use for these things down here and also the ballistics log which is going to give you these weapon frames so this one's for the machine gun which i guess gives you a duplicate just a different role or you could choose this one which is going to be a quest line to get the auto rifle frame probably one of the best things in her inventory is this thing the mod components so thankfully they're no longer a problem so as i was touching on this content is definitely very very different i think if you go into black armory expecting the same stuff as any other dlc like dark blow or house of wolves or osiris or warmind you'll be very confused and probably disappointed so black armory 
point is definitely very strange. It's not like its own massive endgame piece of content. It's more like an extension of the current endgame system, which was already put in place by Forsaken, if that makes sense. Definitely one of the biggest criticisms that I kind of agree with is you can't really play the new stuff unless you play the old stuff. So it's a really weird mentality of playing Dreamy City and all this old content to even attempt the new stuff. Normally in pretty much every single DLC ever, like an actual expansion, the slate is basically wiped clean. So nothing else before matters, what level you are, it doesn't really matter. Everyone starts anew, you all catch up, everyone starts the same place. This one, if you're still 560, you have a lot of grinding to do to get 600 and then even attempt Black Army. So it's very, very strange. Off the top of my head, I think the main way this content could be improved, and especially going forward, would be more new stuff to have on day one for everyone to basically play. I think you're only gonna have a lot of fun in Black Army, especially on day one, if you're already a high level, if you play a lot, if you've got friends to play with especially as well. So I think that's something that definitely could be improved. I love the grindiness, the kind of stuff to earn, because there is a lot of powerful loot out there, and of course a lot of ways to get it, but there's not much kind of base level stuff for just everyone to get. I think it once again goes to show you can't please everyone, so the hardcore players might be happy, saying yes, this is good, this is the grind we asked for, whereas the casual players are saying this is way too grindy, there's nothing to do on day one. Do leave your thoughts down below in the comments, I want to know what you guys think, you liking it, you're not liking it, what are your impressions, if you haven't played so far, and of course your questions, feel free to ask those as well. But I think that's going to do it for today's video, as always I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, a like rating before you leave is massively appreciated. Going to work on some more videos, of course, going much more in depth into the weapons and secrets and stuff being solved. So, of course, stay tuned on the channel for more videos. The brand new raid in the last city, which should be the highlight of Black Armory, goes live on Friday. So, on this channel, I'll be live streaming the second it goes live. But as always, my Instagram and Twitter are linked down below in the description if you want to follow me on those. Clicking on this image will take you to another video of mine, and I'll see you guys in the next one.